What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Anti-Gravity Group Podcast. My name is Brayden Carlson. My name is Taylor Jesse. And I'm Shane, or as you might know me, Postart. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about our dream projects, but not just our dream projects. We're including yours as well. That is, as long as you're a Patreon supporter who happened to comment on this post on the Rocket Vlogs Patreon, but uh, if you want to join the conversation, you can check it out at patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. But what you can do, if you want to look as iced out as I do right now for the audio listeners, I'm wearing the Rocket Vlogs Ugly Rocket sweater. Um, it's currently available at rocketvlogs.com, and it is Cyber Week. So if you use the discount code CYBER23, you get 20% off anything and everything you order from the web store, and that coupon code expires December 2nd. And I'll be pulling the Ugly Rocket sweater about three weeks before Christmas. That way nobody orders it, expecting to get it before Christmas and can't. So if you want to get one, uh, order now or forever hold your peace, at least until next year anyway. But uh, is anybody going to volunteer to offer up their dream project up front? Interpretation of the concept of having a no-holds-barred dream project. Um... I feel like we could have easily just been like, yeah, I want one of every kit and motor that's discontinued and that's my dream. But I did want it to stay within the realm of technically being a project. And while mine's not a single rocket, it would be quite a project. And that is to basically build the dream rocketry warehouse slash shop. I want like a full blown commercial building with like a double wide Nashua tucked in the corner that I can live in. And then just park all my cars and everything inside. But I want just a huge warehouse with every power tool I have ever dreamed of owning. And just birch ply and fiberglass and tubes and nose cones and everything just sitting around so that any rocket project I think of, I can just go for it. I have all the stuff. Let's just build whatever we want for funsies. And uh, we're like doing a little baby version of that with the garage at this house. But... Uh, Obviously, I'm not going to have unlimited resources, but yeah, so while it's not like a single rocket project, it's hard for me to like compartmentalize a cooler rocket project than a 12 inch Punisher right now. And we kind of already <laughs> have that. So uh, I had to yeah. go off route That's a the little bit. Yeah, I know. That's it, the problem I had thinking. <laughs> you're like, oh, this, I have it. We have this. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, well, what is our, we already did the dream project. What do we, where do we go from here? I'm not sure. Yeah, because like bigger is not really the answer in my head. I'm just like, this isn't, it's all right. I have pseudo dream projects, but they're like so stupid that it couldn't actually happen. Like, or well, I wouldn't want to go through the effort maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Like the 12 inch bow mark. That can't really happen. <laughs> I mean, if I had enough funds, I would and like, I would make it happen. I guess. But yeah, that's the thing. Is like the consideration is unlimited money, but like, I was telling Postart this before we started. It has to be something like feasible that you would actually do if you had. Yeah, it's like you could just be like, yeah, I want to build a full scale Mercury Redstone because I have unlimited <laughs> money. But like, I I don't know that I would do that if I had unlimited money. It's no. just wildly I, inconvenient. Mm -hmm. I think the twelve inch bow mark would be on my list because it seems. I mean, it is possible, but it's so terrifying. I would be afraid to do it. Um, because that is gonna. <laughs> it probably isn't. You know what the bow marks sometimes do? They go into missile mode right yeah, yeah. and like um, the wingspan like transport in general would be a nightmare yeah. i did the math on that at some point we would need a huge like flatbed gooseneck trailer <laughs> probably <laughs> you just have to buy a dually truck We're, we have you you and Postar in front and back with like the wide load yeah like six minivans. pilot cars for the the 12 inch yeah. bow mark yeah, I mean, you could make them removable one way or another, which is probably actually the only somewhat reasonable way to execute that. Yeah, just have it bolt on, but is probably possible. Is that it? Is that your dream project then? You're calling it? Do we only have one? I mean, you can throw out a couple more. That's fine. I, 
Like I said, I just don't uh, have anything really outstanding. As like I mean, I've always dreamed project. of the, I've always dreamed of the workshop like you're talking about. But which I'm not. I'm the closest now as I've ever been. The problem always comes down to raw materials. Like right. I just want all of the raw materials on hand and like easily accessible. Like just the rolls of of composites like hanging so you could just pull it off and yeah, shear it. I want like, like a personal stash of tubes like Tim has in his shop for yeah, like for making yeah. wild man. Just like kits. every size you can mix and match. And yeah, like yeah, just do whatever just you like, want. Yeah, and like every aspect ratio of nose cone for every size tube. <laughs> yeah, just like fifty thousand dollars in fiberglass <laughs> inventory. Like hmm <laughs> what am I gonna build nose today? cone am I feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it'd be, I, th- I feel like it would get so overwhelming fast though you're like once you've built like 10 rockets you're gonna like start running into storage issues and they're not yeah. all going to get flown right but you know that's a problem for when i'm a multimillionaire and have a giant rocketry warehouse which is of course going to happen of course <laughs> plus if you have unlimited money and you run out of room for storage you just build another shop. Yeah, you buy more room. You're right. Money can't yeah. buy happiness, but it can buy a big shop, and that's kind of the same thing. It's pretty close. <laughs> All right, well, what's another dream project, then, other th- other than the, the big shop? I feel like that one's pretty universal among, like, every single yeah. Rocket person ever. Um, I mean, the magic crystal would be... <laughs> pretty sweet <laughs> yeah we haven't delved too much into the magic crystal on the old podcast have we i think we talked about it on a live no. stream um yeah i don't i don't that, know if we should say that seems like i mean people could probably put it together we don't obviously don't want to build a yeah. magic crystal firework the size of the firework <laughs> so you know use your imagination on that one but the crazy part is that that one's like not that unrealistic the, no, that I would say that one is for sure going to happen. I yeah. just don't know the timeline. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. We've we've t- we've already talked about it too much, and it, we've done the thing like with the Punisher, yeah. where we're like talking about it, but we know we're not joking deep down. Right. <laughs> how, 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 how funny would it be to build a two times upscale? Yeah. Arcus? What if we use these exact motors? Ha ha ha. Wouldn't that be, be so, so funny? funny? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> look for the giant magic crystal coming to a to a rocket channel near you. <laughs> um, I think we've all dreamed of doing like a giant Bat Boy. Yeah, like the the yeah. blaster blaster car dropping one. <laughs> it's like toy. Yeah, oranges. because of that, that video makes me not want to do it though. But yes, yeah, it sucks a lot <laughs> when your rocket hits a car or a truck. And remember that Cyber Twenty Three RocketVlogs dot com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still haven't heard from either one of those people. That I have no idea how much money that's going to cost me, but. Maybe you'll hear from them right after you lose your job. Right, yeah, that'll be sick. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, they're a little Christmas miracle for me. It's like, you know what? I actually like the damage to my fresh paint. <laughs> Get on, <laughs> scamp. Everything will be fine. <laughs> so, yeah, Cyber23, RocketVlogs.com. Postart, what's your uh, what's your dream project? I... Uh... I kind of stayed a little more to the rules and decided to like kind of stick to one. I, I was struggling between a couple, but the one that I ultimately picked was I want a 12 inch Red Max. Interesting. And I feel like I feel like that's not really that far out of the question, you know? Yeah, I mean, once you we could... build the Dream Rocket Shop, you'll have all the space in the world for those giant Yeah, exactly. Fins. And yeah, then, <laughs> then you can just make them set up to like uh, it's like a crumple zone, so it lands on the fins, intentionally snaps them off, and then you just put new ones on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Braden's dream setup. Right there is just have like fins that are already finished and have decals and everything, and you just put new ones on every time. Yeah, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. You, you join they're the gonna club break too, anyway. Though. You're not allowed yeah. to be hating anymore you're a fin breaker now too yep what's funny i looked up the um uh descent rate 
and it was like 28 feet per second. Oh, so my I was God. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, maybe that's how it broke. Huh. That nice soft dirt forget- doesn't seem that soft when it's going that I- fast. Yeah. Well, I think the added weight of the J350 case to kind of push it over the edge. But I forget that Tim's descent rates on the recon shoots are for like that descent rate. Right. Yeah, also for... He's like, yeah, that's what you should drop it down at. That's the correct descent rate, 28 feet per second. For people not in the know, this was Taylor's 4-inch fiberglass sumo, his fiberglass clone of the Aerotech one. One of the five Uh, videos he's posted to his YouTube channel, actually. (laughs) So soon maybe you'll see another one uh, fixing it. Maybe. What happened to the video that was definitely going up by the end of the week two weeks ago? Uh, I didn't. I didn't finish it. Well, <laughs> I think we all noticed that. Everybody, yeah. berate Taylor in the comments, please. Mm-hmm. Also, we need some Macho Matt bullying as well because he definitely made us all think he was going to be here for this podcast episode. He's yeah. He said, "What time are you guys do to do the podcast? I'll definitely be there." And then he's like, can we move it to Wednesday? I still don't have a mic. And I was like, dude, come on. I even sent him, I was like, here's mics that you can just go buy at Best Buy right now. That will be good enough. And he was like, all right, well, what time are we doing it? And then like today, I was (laughs) like, "Uh, nah, maybe next time. I just, I wish we could get, I guess when we have him finally get Matt on, we can ask him what happened. Um, I'm sure there's some great thing that came up that, causing him to not have time to go get a microphone what we should do is when he finally makes it we should just make the entire episode him catching up on all of the topics so far <laughs> oh man. just hit him with a speed speed yeah, run the, the speed round yeah yeah and then we can have a nice in-depth conversation about how he's doing after the the demon loss <laughs> Are you over it yet? And he starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, since yours is the only rocket pos tire, what motor are you flying that on? That was also kind of a toss up, and that one is more it won't ever happen. Uh probably something along the lines of M twenty two hundreds. A few of them. <laughs> Yeah, that see that's stepping pretty far outside the realm of possibility. Yeah, finding one also, is a task. <laughs> also, even if you did find multiple ones, lighten those things. <laughs> oh, lighten those things together is impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just true. put an M twenty eight oh one in the wi- in the middle to get it up to speed and air start the M twenty two hundreds. Yeah. Which is a chaotic thing to be like, yeah, good luck finding those because I have both of them. But mm-hmm. uh, that's neither here nor there. Don't make that noise, Taylor. I'm not going to put it in the Argus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just hate it when you when you flex on me like that. <laughs> well, if you saw my credit card statement, you probably wouldn't feel like that much of a flex anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway... I'm going to move on to the uh, the mailbag segment, so to speak, which is kind of uh, the topic of this podcast blended with the mailbag. Um, but like I said, I asked on Patreon what everybody's dream projects are, and we actually got quite a few comments. It looks like it says 13. So basically, we're just going to power through these and read out everybody's uh, dream rocket projects and talk about them. And a couple of these are, like, really after my own heart. We're going to start with this one. I believe UPS Rocket Man or UPS Rocket Man uh, says, I would love to build a full-scale Sandhawk, 12-inch diameter, 25 feet tall. Also, a full-scale Nike <laughs> smoke would be sweet. So I love the Sandhawk. This, this street just looks like a flying telephone pole. It's awesome. But I cannot <laughs> imagine the how cumbersome it would be to fly a 25 foot tall 12 inch rocket that, that'd be about like the the beast upscale yeah or, that, uh, or the big dark star tim did that yeah. thing was like yeah. 23 or 20 no i think it was 27 feet wasn't it yeah something insane like that 
so very doable and the full scale Nike smoke there used to be a company that produced them and um that's where that conversation is going to end but i know yep. <laughs> taylor's not so down with the sandhawk but how you feel about the full scale nike smoke dream i would be all the way in on that yeah that's kind of i just don't want to admit i just don't want to make the nose go we kind of, we but. uh were talking about what we thought your dream project might be and we thought a full scale nike smoke would be up there well to be honest i didn't really prepare for this episode i kind of just winging it but that is that is on i mean that would definitely be it i mean maybe not full scale though i think i would rather like like 12 i don't know yeah 12 inch 16 feels like too much it's crazy but you know somebody has to have one of those nose cones sitting unused somewhere because a few of them did get made yeah yeah there's one somewhere so if you're out there in someone's barn right yeah if you have a full barn scale finds nose, nose cone. cone yeah exactly <laughs> dude i want to know is think how big that nose cone would be yeah it was gotta be like eight feet tall ten feet tall yeah he's sizing yeah, up i guess about tw- i got the seven and a half inch one over here so it'd be a little more than tw- half, twice that <laughs> it's so crazy dude it wouldn't even fit in this room no yeah that, <laughs> that would be insane i want to see one i wonder if derek deville still has his you can go watch the video of it firing the ejection charge on the pad um that was one of the, was that the arconia yeah LDRS 22 yep uh how high can you fly or whatever rocket challenge that's what it was called but yeah definitely sick dream projects we uh we approve um emma humphrey says the collaborative whoa the collaborative project i'd like to build is lifting body launch from a fairing on a rocket sent to at least ten thousand feet i think the fairing would be a solid engineering challenge it'd be a great it'd be great to work with an rc plane maker on the lifting body ideally with fpv Essentially, a semi-scale Vulcan Centaur Dream Chaser. I don't know what the FAA rule regime is on RC planes operating that high and what additional waivers would be needed. I have to fully admit that all of that's over my head. Yeah, I I uh-huh. lost me on all of it, almost. So, but it sounds cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, at any rate very aspirational, but my God. Anything that, like, <laughs> requires additional interaction with the FAA is, like, terrifying in my head. Like, <laughs> even going to class three, I'm like, uh, I don't know about all that. It it just it just sounds like too much work. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Unlimited money on the table. Eh. It seems like a lot. Of effort. <laughs> I'm well, good. like it would, if it were, if it was cool, enough, like if I was really into it, you know, I'm not gonna do it just, just willy nilly, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. But now, okay, I have to look this up. The Centaur or Vulcan Centaur Dream Chaser. I'm wondering if it's kind of just like a big rocket glider. Um. Oh, I see. It's like, yeah, it's like a small airplane styled spacecraft. It kind of looks like a sp- uh, like a space shuttle that is launched mm. in the fairing of a big rocket and then like jettisoned from the rocket once it's in space. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeez. yeah, that's uh, that's insanity. So. Um, we're going to move on. Bryce and Nicole, but I have to assume mostly Bryce comments. My dream project <laughs> is a reusable sounding rocket with a 10 kilogram payload capacity, one cubic feet of volume and apogee, uh, 100 kilometers and 100% compliant with the Tripoli safety code. Dream is to bring two identical rockets to an event like Balls, fly them both, recover successfully, and return year after year to fly more student and educational re- research payloads to space. Reusable, public, accessible space. Again, <laughs> insane. <laughs> like, I if anybody's capable, I don't doubt that Bryce could do it. Yeah, that's the most Bryce answer. I, it's so insane to me to 
Like, so many people have an aspiration to put a rocket in space, and I just am not one of them. We've talked about this before yeah. on the podcast. Yep. I, I mean, like, I want to fly stuff high. I do. But that's, like, crazy <laughs> high. I'm glad there's people doing it because I think it's really cool. I just have absolutely zero desire. Right. But maybe like mm-hmm. I have desire to fly like within the sub one like but the fifty to a hundred thousand range. Yeah, exactly. But not to space. Right. Like, I'm just not really a space guy. Although maybe <laughs> in the theoretical realm of this concept where money's unlimited, maybe it would change. Maybe if I flew yeah, a maybe. couple rockets to a hundred thousand feet, I'd be like, ah, What's another two hundred thirty thousand feet? <laughs> we can do that, but just yeah. Well, because if we had, if I had the unlimited budget, I'd I'd immediately buy the gnarliest lathe setup, um, and just start spending half of my day in the shop turning useless parts. Yeah, just <laughs> making huge hardware just for yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like look, I made that, a cube that only case. <laughs> That can only lead to one path is us accidentally make like us talking about not wanting to go to space while simultaneously building a rocket to go to space. Right. Yeah. That, <laughs> That's how that would go. It would be just like, look the- at all these parts I made. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> can you imagine if we put like an S motor together and it went to space? Exactly how the Arcus and Punisher conversations <laughs> went. Yeah. We would just have to, Dumb, uh, dumb down the conversation to us convincing ourselves that like it wasn't what we were saying it is i guess yeah it's kind of a confusing way to say that well, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> have to take the phrase that everybody uses repeatedly in this hobby and industry this space is hard and convince ourselves that that is wrong and then we can just <laughs> do it no problem <laughs> But yeah, that's what I was driving at. There was a lot of people have aspirations to go to space. I'm not one of them, but most of those people don't have aspirations to do it repeatedly or multiple times in one launch. So that is lofty, but I do think that with the unlimited theoretical budget that Bryce could definitely pull that off. For sure. Yeah. All right. Rocket Man, that's that's all his name is on Patreon, says, <laughs> My dream project is a 100k two-stage 75 to 54, with the total impulse being no more than a full end motor. 20,480 newtons. Newton seconds, sorry. That's, I feel like, not impossible. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just need the right motor combination. Yeah. Fin shape. If you're including the possibility of research motors as well i mean you could well i assume that's they would be research motors yeah so i don't know that we've ever really publicized our plans for our two stage because we do this thing (laughs) where like if a if a project is something that we think is feasible for real we joke about it like we did with the punisher and the arcus and then we start talking about it publicly but one that Taylor and I have discussed that we were planning on flying at balls this year and that all fell apart. I have the motor. <laughs> <laughs> we uh we were gonna do a two stage. Um this was our warm up two stage concept, by the way. <laughs> uh to do an M twenty fifty boosting the uh fifty four millimeter aerotech end burner. Um but given that that motor's not it's been certified, so we never I don't think there's a RASP file or anything for it. So we never went beyond the concept as far as like simulating it or anything, but that could probably get you pretty close right there. And if you had, no, I think I, I think there was, I think I did get a file for it. Um, and I was getting like seventy five thousand. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> which, which I think is overshoot. Yeah. I don't think it would do that, but, um, um it's still it would do over 50 for sure yeah so i think with like the right optimization and like it, that's an m2050 booster like an m1850 even would go yeah and that, way crazy. And that k in burner was barely a k yeah so like 
that w- we were not even to a full M impulse, which is nuts. Right. So I yeah. I think that is like well within the realm of possibility. And I mean, you look Our at current- Kip Dagradas's rocket was not even class three. That was O impulse, and it went. Yeah, I know that's nuts. What two two hundred ninety thousand? Mm-hmm. Something. Like I that? still don't understand it, but and also like yeah, ninety thousand like feet higher than it seemed to, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. What if he just was thinking that Ras Arrow was like not that accurate, like we just thought? He's like, yeah, no way. I'm gonna say it's gonna go two hundred thousand, and that just it was stimming to three hundred, and he got three hundred. <laughs> something tells me kip's a little more like involved in accurate simulation than just being like nah that's not right probably <laughs> <laughs> seems like he's a little more meticulous and uh yeah involved than that uh which is one of the reasons we don't have any space aspirations <laughs> that seems like a lot of work dude <laughs> oh man yeah what um, uh but our the the two stage hopefully will happen next year and then the the like goober obvious joke this will never happen which means uh it might happen was <laughs> for a while there we were talking about doing an N1000 to M685 two stage uh which would be crazy which someone someone did that and it went to space Can't remember or who. not to space it went 100 120,000 something yeah i just can't I I just need to step back here for a second. Boot. Clarify that I know that a hundred thousand feet is not where space is. Thank you. That's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Carry on. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad news actually. <laughs> That'd be so funny, dude. Yeah, space. <laughs> no, not space. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, it's getting those to stage. Like getting the rocket to fly straight to the stage due to M six eighty five off an N one thousand seems like something that would be extremely difficult. But just the the pad weight boosting with the N one thousand is so sketchy. But we could buy one of the active stabilization things from Jim Jarvis. Yeah, that'd be sick. I think that's kind of the. I, w- I won't say cheat code to that, but a monumental leap forward in the ability for it to work. <laughs> that That's definitely in the budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> this, is, like, this is starting, honestly, that particular project is really encroaching on the unlimited budget required type situation. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, that's just... It's just because anything that costs like $10,000 or more is like unlimited budget in our mind. With some people, that's just like a, a fine amount of money to spend at once. Um, I'll have to tell you about this Honda Civic that just sold that I once facilitated the sale of after this podcast because it's insane. But, <laughs> um, so we're going to move on. Ryan, who uh, I met at Rockstock, I believe. I I know I just met you. Um this is my dream project is full scale SM2 and launch it out of a canister like they do on Navy ships. Dude, <laughs> I kind of love the concept of like a scale rocket with a scale launcher. Um <laughs> like the Patriot yeah. battery. Were those yeah. seven and a half inch Patriots, right? Yeah. And there's like, so like sick. six of them or something like that. Yeah. yeah. As who did that? Uh it was it MDRA? There's a vid- well, n- the the one I'm thinking of was at LDRS 29 at Lucerne. Oh, that's right. But there's there's been more than one. That was the big one though. Right, it was six seven and a half inch with K 375s which is a pretty sick motor choice. Yeah, that's so crazy, dude. That LDRS went relentlessly hard. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Robert DeHate flew the full scale Patriot, right? Um, yeah. Tim flew the Dark Star on the O with the K twenty forty fives that almost caused a problem. Um, <laughs> Porthos, yeah, on Red Line, yeah. yeah. Sumo with the drag plate. It burns when I pee. Oh, the twelve inch Talon with a P motor. In oh it. yeah. What a crazy launch! 
but I have oh, to. Oh, the giant, uh, the giant Comanche three or four? Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that I mean, yeah, it's Comanche three, but it was four stage. Okay, it looks like the SM two standard missile. Oh yeah, it's pretty much a Rim sixty seven. Um, yeah, I I vibe with that heavy. That rocket is still one of my favorites. I have a soft spot for it. My dad's level one rocket was the Aerotech strong arm, which is like a very loosely interpreted sport scale version of that. Was it? Oh, it uses warthog fins. Okay, Michael Graylist says jumbo dark star on an O or a full scale Nike smoke. Uh, dude, the Jumbo Dark Star O combination does go pretty hard. Uh, Ryan Toso flew O5280 in one, and it actually ripped the fins off, I think. But you imagine... Like, Can you re- what was the second thing you cut out? Ultimate Dark Star or, or what? Jumbo Dark Star on an O or a full-scale Nike Smoke. On? Just says just full-scale anything? Nike Smoke, yeah. Oh. It has to be a P motor, oh, wow. at least. I would do full scale <laughs> Nike smoke, obviously. What would you do it on? What motor? Back to the dream uh, project thing. Pat Gord's like P motor, obviously. Yeah. A Polish Rojo. Pat I don't Gorzlik know. There's so P. much room in there, though. I would probably do <laughs> three of them. <laughs> 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 a, a P and uh, four 75 millimeter M's. Oh, my God. That's pretty hardcore. All right. Max says, My dream is scales of launch vehicles, but more emphasis on the staging of them rather than the scale details. Scale Saturn V, but it has a five-engine cluster in the first stage, five-engine cluster in the second stage, and a single engine in the third stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I kind of love that. <laughs> Well, that's kind of reminds me of the that insane uh, in one that John Coker built. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, that's yeah. It, that had like had like fifty six G motors in the first stage. <laughs> yeah, it, and it worked. It all worked. Yeah, it for didn't. no. It's so crazy. That was on. I think it's on YouTube, right? It was. Uh, yeah. M- my God, dude! If you can find that video, uh, I'll try and find it, and I'll put a link in the description if I. It's remember, nuts. <laughs> um, but if you're just listening to this oh, also, on YouTube, go go find that video. It's crazy. Also, similarly, Andy Warner did did one too, uh, that flew on a ton of Pro Thirty Eight and Pro Fifty Four motors. Yeah, no Vostok. He did the Vostok. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that. And then he also adds scale Juno one launch vehicle, but with the rotating tub at the forward end that has the second, third, and fourth <laughs> stages of clusters. <laughs> and a bumper whack two stage would be incredible. Yeah, I do like the whack corporal. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, I I that's another one of those things that like that is above my aspirations. I don't have any desire to build a four stage rocket let alone one that's clustered in each stage <laughs> i respect it i respect the audacity to even want to be willing to give that a try but nah i'm good <laughs> all right alex says my dream project is definitely to build a full scale iris and fly it on something wild yet appropriate like a p motor definitely would have to build a booster too I am 100% with you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I uh how big is a full scale? I think they're 12 inch. Yeah. So the fins though. It's my fine. God. It's fine. What is where are they going to break <laughs> off? Break off on landing? Each, well, each one's a table. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a whole <laughs> barn door. If you can fit a seven and a half inch iris in my Ford Fiesta. We could easily get a twelve inch one in the professional masterpiece. Easily. I think we could fit it in the professional masterpiece for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that means we got build one, right? <laughs> Full scale oh, no. iris. <laughs> no. We have the nose cone. We'll just repaint it for a flight. It'll be fine. We have half the material. We <laughs> no all we have is the hard part to get, but that's the hard part. 
All we got to do is build the thing. How hard is it to build a 12-inch rocket? You know? Wouldn't it be, like, 20 feet tall? Yeah, it would be super tall. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> let, me, let me look. <laughs> I think it would be over 20 feet. I think it's a little... Uh, yeah. Do, 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 do. No, it's <laughs> 16.4 feet. It's Punisher sized. What? Oh. Dude, it's we got to no. build a full scale iris. No. Wait, I thought How yours was 16 that tall? feet tall. That's what it says. 12 inches in diameter, 16 feet tall. Apogee of 190 miles. Okay, hear me out. We build a full scale one <laughs> <laughs> that flies to the full scale altitude. Easy. I'm out. All right. Suddenly, I want to go to space. You know what? I'm space out. Space is easy, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Dude, uh, yeah, somehow that's... What's weird is we know how big it is. We saw one at Goddard when we went to MDRA. Oh, yeah. And now looking back, that that's hilarious that we built a rocket that's like the exact same <laughs> size as that. Because I remember looking at that and being like, whoa, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that was when we decided that the uh the nike black brand was the best rocket ever because they had one standing <laughs> yeah. up yeah. there the iris was standing up but a windstorm or something blew it over and it yeah. bent one of the fins which is hilariously <laughs> appropriate <Yeah. laughs> but and it was just left there the booster on top of that though is insane i don't know if you're familiar it's Alex. He's probably familiar with Jerry O'Sullivan's Iris, but that thing was yeah so sick. The nine I motor booster with the Missile Works WRC staging. So you just watch it and you press the button to fire the sustainer. <laughs> it's the <laughs> coolest thing on the planet, dude. All right, so look for the anti gravity group full scale Iris going to space. Uh, probably cloud burst next year. We <laughs> God, that gives us four or five months. That seems pretty reasonable. We're going to have to double back on my desires never to have to work directly with the FAA for a special permit if we're going to space in Arconia. But I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure it's fine, right? <laughs> <laughs> my dream project for our, sorry, Sleepy Sack says, my dream project at this point would probably be a big, beefy 7.5-inch lock kit. I'm a fan of all the lock kits, but 7.5-inch diameter is way bigger than anything I have flown to date. Seven and a half inch diameter rockets are big. Okay. Yeah. Like it's, it's this weird. <laughs> uh, it's the default for a big project is like always to go to 12 inches or bigger. But I think people just don't really appreciate how big a seven and a half inch rocket is. Like there aren't enough seven and a half inch rockets being built anymore right i feel like i just don't see them this is yeah. a, i mean not counting like a warlock or whatever right this is a call to action like a, take advantage of holiday season tell everybody you want uh whether it's hanukkah christmas whatever you got going on uh tell your family you want a seven and a half inch lock kit <laughs> and then <laughs> let's get this going let's everybody meet us in argonia i'll fix the honest john and we'll uh, we'll just have a seven and a half inch rocket flying day. It'll be awesome. But yeah, it's like uh, there's two in the in one of our rooms here right now, and like three. Oh yeah, <laughs> that uh, boy. Yeah, well, I mean, but that's like eh. there's two big <laughs> seven and a half inch rockets, <laughs> and like you open the door, they both have really big fin spans too, because it's the Iris and the Honest John. You open the door and the room is useless with them in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. They are big that's rockets. Partially, that's partially why I moved the sumo in here because it was in the garage next to the giant Arcus and Punisher. <laughs> and it just like made that area useless. <laughs> yeah, they were in our garage, but we brought them in because we had to have the garage door repaired. So like, <laughs> yeah. all the big rockets are stuffed into the rocket room right now. And it is... Uh, it is quite the sight, but if if you wanted to go in there to build something right now or use a 3D printer, you just can't because there's two seven and a half inch rockets. <laughs> so I appreciate the modesty, Sleepy Sack, is what I'm getting at here because seven and a half inch is not that modest in the first place. It's a big rocket. Okay, Lisa Gabriel, I have also. Oh, good. 
I would just like to add seven and a half is, in my opinion, the limit of what you can fly by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also, like, can you actually? Could you fly the sumo by yourself? I could, not easily. Right. That's, I would have agreed with that. Um, except for the iris it d- it depends on the rocket cuz the glass iris not a chance that thing was going on the pad without yeah. five people weighed 82 pounds i mean i don't really i think putting it on the pad like if i can put it on the pad with just a pad manager's help then i'm cool right. like that i count that as doing it by myself but i um not not going out with a group of people <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so you you could do it with the and paper prepping iris it. probably it's just like it's super long, so it's kind of inconvenient. But the honest John as well, we just like I I don't think I could fly that just by myself. But and that thing only weighs like thirty pounds. It's just they're big. Actually, I take that back. I remember putting the sumo on the pad with post tart. Was didn't you help me? Yeah, it was me. Yeah, uh, it was super sketchy, and I think we had someone holding the pad for us. Yeah. Yeah, because seven and a half so. inch rockets are big. I don't know where this like yeah. got lost in translation. It's like for a while there, <laughs> I swear everybody thought like an ultimate wild man was huge because it's four inches in diameter, eight feet tall, and then we kind of that was coming down like from the transition where everybody used to fly seven and a half inch rockets because if you wanted to fly an M and you couldn't afford a Dynacom kit, or a hawk mountain kit you had to build a huge rocket and uh there was like a a mid period there where everybody stopped doing big rockets and like really the ultimate wild man was like massive right a six inch rocket that's 12 feet tall and that is that is a big rocket that would be hard to fly by yourself too but like somehow maybe it's just the fact that there's like kits readily available that lock has like 12 seven and a half inch kits that you can just buy and have delivered <coughs> it's such a big big rocket that uh i feel like people really underestimate it um but yeah <laughs> not enough bruisers in the world yeah. in this decade <laughs> let's get some bruisers guys the bruisers are uh, bruiser i-284 yeah dude. Uh, <laughs> that's special what's we should do it we should do a 90s special <laughs> What's interesting is like there's a lot of people because I'm doing that giveaway with Locke right now for a seven and a half inch Patriot, and I was like to win it, just comment on the video what you would do with it, and so many people are like, I would I would use it for like upper end level two motors and for my level three, I'm like you could fly that on a J three fifty like pretty safely. Those things are super light for how big they are, but. Yeah, you could definitely put an eye motor in it. Yeah, which is awesome. I mean, I flew my seven and a half inch paper iris on a K850, and it's fiberglass. But that whole rocket with no motor in it weighs like, like seventeen pounds or something like that with fiberglass yeah. <laughs> and half inch fins. Like the Patriot is dumb light. And then there's a bunch of people that are like, I would I would carbon fiber or fiberglass it. I'm like, nah, you don't need that. A couple of people are like, I want to put ninety eight. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, maybe do that for that one. But, uh, <laughs> like, you throw M650s, M1297s in that thing unglassed all day long. Get yourself that stiffener in the coupler and you're well, you're golden. How thick are the fins? Uh, I think they're three eighths. Yeah, I could probably take a 1297. Probably, this guy says. with with <laughs> With the stiffy. Yeah, I have the stiffy. If any lock boys are listening, time to prove him wrong. Probably <laughs> says prove him right. I guess uh, anti prove his hesitation. Well, it's just the Patriot's not a super long rocket if it's not if uh, if it's built to you know properly, not extended. That's beneficial. What it being shorter is more helpful. Like f- I know. I'm just saying it's like gonna be. It's gonna be real light. Yeah. I mean, Dave did his level three. Dave Barber from Locked is level three on a five and a half inch Iris that was unglassed. 
Oh. It was an M650, but or maybe 685. For some reason, I thought he glassed it. No. Not as far as I know. Oh, it was a long, it was a long burn. Though. Yeah. Well, Gary just did that too. His five and a half inch rocket, Gary yeah. from Aerotech, did his little three on M650, also unfiberglassed. We saw two people try and do a five and a half inch Thor with end motors though at LDRS <laughs> at Bonneville. Um, mm-hmm. Those <laughs> folded in half predictably. <laughs> yep. Um, Lisa Gabery, uh, I have to assume Jonathan Gabery says. I 100% agree with Alex. I've been thinking about that ever since I watched the Arcus fly. Um, I assume he's talking about the Iris then. I was thinking <laughs> a Central 98, 475s, and 454s. Um, <laughs> I have to say, Jonathan, I appreciate <laughs> the the uh, audacity once again, but the nine motor cluster just is not it <laughs> we we are <laughs> never doing that again no never it's just so unbelievably cumbersome yeah that rocket is a five motor cluster with four extra tubes yeah it's just <laughs> what it is what is kind of nice though is like we can do 38s <laughs> or 54s so in the case of this you would have the option to do 75s or 54s or mix and match or whatever but if you do ever bring this project to fruition i promise you the one-time experience of flying nine motors is like not really worth it <laughs> <laughs> so you imagine trying to do like the n1 going back to that 56 motors dude <laughs> no way dude i just can't believe they like all lit yeah i don't know yeah that is absolutely absurd by the way speaking of dumb clusters um well i just the other day i flew a j350 by itself and it was really awesome i'm just like that we is wasted a dumb cluster. four of those <laughs> In a giant cluster. And I'm like, would we have noticed the difference if they weren't there? Dude, that's how I was with J570s. I've flown two J570s <laughs> and they were both in one rocket at the same time as three other motors. I'm like, I think I've never just flown a J570 before. <laughs> or I think we would have noticed funnier. <laughs> we would have noticed the difference in the sense that our nose cone might still be on. That's possible. Maybe. <laughs> that is probably true yeah i think <laughs> but because i I'm, i think i'm just upset that they didn't that they lit s- somewhat staggered yeah mm. i mean it wasn't uh, that noticeable though um i also I'm say but we would have seen the big ball of fire if they all just hit yeah that's true yeah i also realized that i've never flown just a j350 either because i bought a motor to fly just one and then put it in the arcus so Maybe I should order a J three fifty. Dude, J I haven't flown a single J three fifty in a long time. I put that one in the sumo the other the other day, and I'm like, this motor goes relentlessly hard yeah. from like, the thirties pads. <laughs> yeah, that's that's super hard. I'm like, I should just buy a bunch of these. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with uh with the Black Saturday sale this year. I'm like, I'm I'm probably gonna go pretty tame. But at the same time, I have a whole bunch of AMW motors that I could fly at far. And I'm like, maybe I should just buy the hardware for those. But that's neither here nor there. Um, finally, Kevin Osler, the last one to comment. I just want to build a rocket with perfect fillets and paint. I have my level three rocket and a skinwalker in boxes, but I just want to perfect finish, perfect the finish, especially before the skinwalker. Um I, I admire this as a, a dream being very attainable. Um, it's all, all comes down to sanding. No matter what the problem is, <laughs> it's all sanding. Um, you can fix any problem with a lot of time sanding. <laughs> There's a reason I've got the sanding channel meme and like, <laughs> But how long did we we spent ten hours sanding one of the Arcus tubes, one of the tubes before LDRS? That was l- literal hell, and that that was one <laughs> of the worst things I've ever done. And that was our second day in a row sanding them too. So, yeah, I mean the fillets don't have to be laid out perfect. Nothing has to be done perfect. You can have runs yeah. in paint. You can have all kinds of issues, and you can sand them all away. The 
the thing that always gets me is I see people seem to get caught up on, you know, doing the perfect fillet. And it's like, it never comes out r- truly perfect. Right. Yeah, that's and the thing. I don't, I don't even, I don't even really, I try to get the shape, you know, like the shape kind of right. Right. But it, it's all just sanding and filling. Like if you want like that perfect blend. Yeah. Look. Yeah, that's all it is. It's like I've never had a set of fillets that just came out good, and I was yeah, I was ready yeah. to paint. I don't. It. Well, I mean, and they only get so good. Like you can't. Like, no, there isn't see, really that's a where you're fillet. wrong. That <laughs> is where you're wrong, my friend. <laughs> Look at uh, without sanding. Oh no, no. I th- that's what I. I mean. thought that's what you were saying was like even with sanding, you're gonna get to a point where no. it can't be perfect. And trust me, that is not true. You can sand for days, and <laughs> they they look amazing, like I did with my fifty four rock. No, I know when enough sanding got lost. is possible. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah. So just uh, take that in stride. Understand that perfection in a finish doesn't come from perfection in creating the finish or fillets. It's it's all in finishing. They call it finishing for a reason because. You can start to paint it, but just having paint on the rocket does not mean it's finished. And just putting <laughs> fillets down does not mean it's finished. So just take your time, spend a whole lot of time uh, finishing it off. But that is our last entrant for Dream Projects. And I think that brings the podcast to an end, um, which is great because my headphones just died. So I can't really hear anything anymore. But. Uh, <laughs> My name is Braden Carlson. You can find me on YouTube at Rocket Vlogs. And also, I don't really shout out my Instagram that much, but I'm going to start trying to post more Rocket stuff over there. So you can follow me on Instagram at BigB1011. Just be prepared for like a lot of car content to come through there. And uh, I'm going to hand it off to my co-hosts so they can plug their stuff. Uh, my name's Taylor Jesse, and you can find me on YouTube at The Rocket Channel. And my name is there Shane. There will be video oh. someday. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> my God. Yeah, that's how I feel about mine, too. But you can find that channel <laughs> at Post Heart Propulsions on YouTube. You have a video. I know. Just but post it's not it. upload it. Just post it. <laughs> I got Nobody edit can. It. Okay, we'll do that first. <laughs> anyway, berate these guys in the comments so that they bring you content. So you can enjoy. Also, it. if you can find Macho Matt on the internet, yeah, bully him, I'm not, please. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not telling you to to you know. I'm not saying to go find some certain name, but <laughs> if you can find Macho Matt on the internet. <laughs> tell him he needs to get on the podcast. Yeah, that's all. Don't bully yeah. him. Be uplifting. There was a couple comments specifically requesting that he come to the podcast, and I think that is what made him think that he should be on it. So. Keep showing Macho Matt the love. We'll we'll set up an episode where he catches up on all the topics that we've done so far. But thank you guys so much for being here. We are the Anti-Gravity Group. This is the Anti-Gravity Group podcast, and we will see you next time.